Um, I listened to the presser today of Shanahan and he, Eric Armstead is out. Oren Burks is out. Ross Dwelly out. Javon Hargrave is out with a hamstring. Elijah Mitchell is also out. And then Banks, Burford, uh, both guards, basically, uh, Greenlaw and Mooney Ward are all questionable. What's the most interesting injury there in your mind as far as, uh, you know, this game against Arizona? you got a pair of defensive tackles who are out for this game. Yeah. Um, and you've got a, uh, a Cardinals team that's coming off its bye and a Cardinals team that has a, a really good running back in James Conner. And by the way, James Conner, remember at the end of the, uh, the week, uh, what was it? Week four Cardinals game. He was steamed at the end of that. Remember he got into a, a post game fight with Talano Hufanga on the field. So, right. yeah. um, you know, the combination of that, plus the Cardinals buy, plus the fact that really the middle of that 49ers defense is banged up, um, you know, that, that could make for a more interesting game than uh, we probably thought uh, coming out of the Seattle win. So if I'm the Cardinals, I'm, I'm you know, giving the ball to James Conner early and often, um, you know, to control the clock, to, to eat up yards, and to keep the ball out of Brock Purdy's hands. Um, this might be a game with, where the, uh, the 49ers offense really has to go out and win it for them. Uh, it might be one where the defensive ends, the 49ers are very healthy at defensive end, Bosa, Chase Young, uh, Cleveland Furl, those guys really have to do yeoman's work, um, to, uh, to make sure that, uh, they can compensate for some loss of talent, um, especially in the middle of that defense. Harm, Armstead and Hargrave are, you know, two of the bigger contracts on the team. Well, how do you think of uh, Givens and Kinlaw and Kalia Davis when you're thinking and you're projecting to Sunday? Uh, it seems like Kinlaw has been healthy this year, and I think he's playing his best ball. Um, I don't know what the early returns are on Kalia Davis, but I would imagine, I mean, Steve Wilkes said last week, this guy's going to get some serious run in the in the weeks ahead. Yeah, I was watching Davis uh, pretty closely against the Seahawks. It was hard to tell because it seemed like every time he was in the game, he was getting a double team. And, um, you know, nobody does well against double teams. Um, but he looked good in, in Philadelphia. And you're right, he's going to get a lot of snaps in this game. I think that probably T.Y. McGill gets called up from the practice squad for this one. He's a guy that um, played a lot last year. So it's, it's not like he's uh, he's coming in totally um uh fresh um uh, he's he knows this defense he played I think, over 200 snaps last season including the playoffs so um they do have some guys that are experienced experience in this defense they're gonna have to step up and and i agree with you with, with uh, javon kinlaw i think he's um just moving around better and you see that you see him almost showing that off on some plays uh you know plays down the field away from him. He's the guy running after the ball um, and um, and trying to make plays at the sideline and things like that. Just don't know if he really had the ability to do that in years past. He had the knee, first of all. And, you know, if you see him in the locker room, um, you know, he takes his shirt off and he's cut now. I mean, he's ripped, it's, not, yeah. it's not quite the, the Nick Bosa uh, body, but he's uh, definitely going in that direction. So, this is a guy that's that's taken his uh, his conditioning, his diet much more seriously in year four. Uh, probably means that he's not going to be back. He and, and Givens, by the way, are both um, uh, free agents in March. Kalia Davis uh, of of this trio that's going to play on Sunday is the one guy who signed for twenty twenty four. So really, it's um, it's a good test for him. It's a good warm up, and it's a good. Uh, I'm sure the the scouting staff, the the front office are watching uh, just to see, okay, what do we need to add to that defensive tackle room? Because uh, they like to have four guys in uniform. Right now they've got Hargrave, they've got Armstead, they've got Kalia Davis signed for next year. Um, the question is, you know, how do they find that fourth guy? Is it a, uh, a draft pick? Is it a an affordable free agent? Um, they need to bring in probably two more guys at that position. You know, and I, I've, I've interviewed Kinlaw a couple times in the last few weeks, and he's just, I like him. I mean, we, me and him have a good uh, good rap, and it's just like there's an intensity to him. He can be kind of an intimidating figure uh, because he is just a, 
he's he's a huge man. He's a he's he doesn't always have a smile on his face. So you kind of wonder, is he approachable or not? But I just I mean, it seems like me and him have getting some great conversations and I'm really enjoying getting to know the guy a little bit and just talking to Armstead, talking to Javon himself. It's like when this guy plays with a bended knee, when he plays with leverage, he gets a lot done. I mean, he's getting a lot done against the run, against the pass. Um, I'm very impressed with with the way he's played. And for whatever reason, in past years, he's had a hard time just avoiding, you know, hits on those knees and just staying active week after week. This year, knock on wood, you know, he's been able to to remain healthy and play with leverage, play with energy. Um, and it, it doesn't seem like he's not, those knees aren't wrapped. They're not, there's no indications that he's got pain. When I ask him about it, he's like, no, I feel good. I feel really good. And I feel, you know, real positive about the way I'm playing. Um, I know you get a chance to go around the room and talk to a number of the guys in the room. Have you had dialogue with, with Kinlaw this year and, and what's your assessment? Cause it, he seems to be in a great place mentally, emotionally, uh, maybe compared to, you know, where he was a year ago, let's say. Yeah, certainly he's not. He doesn't need to be defensive uh, because he's he's playing so well. And, and I found him to be perfectly friendly every time I've, I've talked to him as well. And and, and people who know him, um, especially people uh, who are with him, and I can't remember the name of the uh, the junior college he was in at Mississippi. I wrote a story about it, but uh, the people there really, really think the world of him just as a, um, a, a sweet person, a kind person. Um, and I think that's probably where he had a real kind of turnaround in his life, uh, did not have the easiest upbringing in the world. But, um, you know, I, I agree with what you're seeing on the field. I mean, uh, Kyle Shanahan's point today is that this guy can practice three days uh, every week. Um, you know, there's, uh, uh, a pathway for improvement that he just didn't have because of the injuries. I mean, even when he was playing, um, you know, he had to watch his snaps. Uh, he was on a side field a lot. Uh, this is just week in and week out practice. And that's how these guys get better. And I think you see it, you know, in, in years past, he was really easy for me to pick out, uh, when he was in the game. Um, he was bigger than everybody. He was higher than everybody. This year, you see him getting into that that crouch um, right before the snap, and he's down low, and 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 that's what he needs to do uh, consistently is hit the uh, the guard, whoever he's going against, low. Uh, once he gets up, that's when he's he's easier to move out um, of the uh, the line of scrimmage there. But um, he's been doing a good job of that. The knees are a part of it. He's just working at it. Um, uh, and, and I think he's going to be pretty sought after. I don't know what the comp pick would be for Javon Kinlaw. It depends on uh, the contract he's offered, but uh, you know, I think it's safe to make a, make a, a, a bet that he's going to be snapped up in free agency. Are you surprised that Zach Ertz is not a 49er? I mean, he's out there, he's available. Dwelly has got the high ankle sprain. Um, looks like he's going to miss may, probably a number of weeks. Do you, are you surprised? I mean, what are you hearing on the Ertz front? Do you think Ertz is going to sign period at this point? Yeah, it's uh, it is surprising because it did seem like there were some teams that were um, hot and heavy to sign him after he became a free agent. And the 49ers were, were one of the, the teams. I was told that there are four teams, two in the AFC, two in the NFC. The two NFC teams were the, uh, the Eagles and the 49ers, um, but he just hasn't signed yet. And for the 49ers, you can sort of understand why um, he doesn't play special teams anymore. And right now with all these injuries, that's that's a big deal. You need to have guys on your roster who are going to help you out there. I mean, we, we're even seeing, um, you know, uh, uh, Logan Ryan uh, was playing special teams the other day. Chris Conley was playing special teams. Guys in their 30s are on that unit because if you're in uniform, uh, when the 49ers have all these injuries, you have to play it. So I think that's part of it. Um, Ross Dwelly isn't going to be out for very much longer. He was doing some stuff on a side field today. Um, so I, I think it's just for these teams, there's a respect for Zach Ertz, um, but not all these teams have a role for him uh, at the moment. So I think that's kind of finding the right fit there. 
I don't know if an injury for, for one of these teams would do it. Uh, I know that the Eagles just got back uh, their, their tight end from an injury. So um, I think that's probably the reason why he's just kind of sitting out there um, unsigned right now. Both guards are in, are listed as questionable. So Armstead, Burks, Dwelly, Hargra- Hargrave, and Mitchell are all out. And then questionable, Aaron Banks, Spencer Burford, Dre Greenlaw, Mooney Ward. Let's talk about Banks and Burford for a second. Banks has got a hip. I talked to him last week after the game, and he's like, man, it's getting harder and harder as the season goes on to roll out of the rack on Monday morning. He's had turf toe. He's had the hip. He's had a number of nagging injuries. And then Burford, if Banks and Burford – can't go Feliciano plays where and who's the other guard I think that Banks is going to play just from what um I saw on Friday he was he was there in his usual left guard spot and um it was Feliciano in the right guard spot uh Burford was out there so um it seems like he might be the backup at both spots but in a scenario where both guys are um, unable to play, I, you know, I wonder whether, uh, Ben Barch would, uh, come in there. Your guy, Ben Barch. Um, right. I don't know. I don't know if he's, um, more well-versed, uh, on one side or the other, but, uh, you know, the Jaguars, Jaguars, Vikings, 49ers all play, um, a lot of, uh, kind of zone blocking technique. Uh, so when, um, yeah, I forget who was explaining this to us the other day. I guess it was Chris Forster. Burst. Yeah. Forster mentioned that George Warhop, who was with Jacksonville, was like, you guys ought to grab Ben Barch, which when I heard that story, I was wondering, is Chris telling this story out of school? Maybe maybe this is not a good thing for George Warhop. It doesn't <laughs> seem like the good kind of thing that you would necessarily want to say to another team in, in the league, didn't you? I don't know if, what you thought of that little anecdote. Yeah, I mean, when when Chris Furster gets uh, cranking, um, it's it's hard to kind of shut off the spigot uh, at that point. But the bottom line was that the 49ers were looking at Ezra Cleveland uh, around the time of of the draft, um, and Ezra Cleveland's a guard who was with Minnesota uh, around the time of the the trade deadline. Sorry, um, he was with Cleveland. He was on the outs in Cleveland, and he ends up signing with the Jaguars. Um, and that made Ben Barch expendable and, um, and the Jaguars ended up, um, uh, I forget they, they cut him and then they, they signed him to the practice squad. I forget how he reached the 49ers, but point being is that all these guys have been playing in similar offenses. So it shouldn't be, um, a, a big stretch for, for Barch to, uh, to come in at some point if he's needed. It'll, it'll be interesting to see. I think he was active. Uh, for the Seahawks game, played on special teams, uh, which kind of suggests that he would be the next man up if there are two injuries at uh, at guard. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of an interesting one, too. I kind of liked Barch in the draft process um, and, and kind of lost track of him, didn't realize he was in Jacksonville. 